the other story, Afro-Asian Artists in Post-War Britain, curated by Rashid Areen, was mentioned a number of times yesterday. And as Hamad has previously suggested, the exhibition haunts how we, and more specifically I, as a historian of British art, understand the presentation and reception of South Asian artists in Britain during the post-war period. And so today I address one aspect of this show head on. In her review of the show um, in 1989, Rita Keegan observed that, quote, no Asian women artists were included. Irene's omission of South Asian women was of widespread concern amongst artists at the time, and in December 1989, Shutaba Biswas wrote an extended critique of the show for the New Statesman and Society, titled The Wrong Story. In her article, Biswas suggested that the show's focus on male modernist painters was a disservice to the exacting and innovative practices being undertaken by a younger generation of Afro-Asian artists and female artists in particular. She took objection not only to the exclusion of women from the show, but also the representation of women within artworks included on display. And she cited Ivan Perez's painting, The Arrival, seen here, with its passive, eroticized female nudes as being of particular concern. Bizoz went on to argue that Irene's interpretation of this painting in the exhibition catalog reinforced phallocentric male hierarchies of modernity. Bizoz's critique articulated numerous conversations about the other story that were taking place both publicly and privately. Um, and in this paper, I will examine some of the exhibitions of South Asian women artists staged in Britain during the 1980s in order to contextualize the anger and frustration uh, stimulated by Irene's exhibition. In the process, I aim to recognize and articulate the challenges and difficulties faced by British South Asian female artists in their struggle for self-representation. So the 1980s saw a generation of female artists finding their voice. These artists, whether born or raised in Britain, sought to make art that expressed their particular experience of being Indian in Britain or British Asian. And I was, had an internal debate about whether or not I should use the term diaspora artists here or go with the artists of South Asian origin or South Asian artists in Britain. Um, so we'll see where that goes. Now, for many of these artists, India was a distant memory or experienced through memories of family members. And so I want to think um, today about the specificity of um, South Asian British artists. So in her essay of 1984 for the Feminist Review, Parita, Parita Trevedi challenged her reader to conjure up a picture of an Asian woman. She asked, quote, have the words passive, submissive been part of your portrayal? And I give you here Joshua Reynolds as an example of the type of uh, orientalized, submissive uh, Indian woman. So in the face of such pervasive modes of suppression, she argued that white feminists needed to recognize their own orient orientalizing tendencies and that Asian women needed to critically enact and create new imaginings. The generation of artists leaving art school in Britain in the late 1970s and early 80s seemingly took up this challenge. Utilizing a range of fine art and craft media, their work was driven by personal and political desires to challenge hegemonic visual discourses in Britain, which, as Pratip Obama observed, stereotyped Asian women as meek and passive victims. By confronting existing images of South Asian womanhood, Artists including Shutapa Biswas, uh, Zarina Bimji, Chyla Berman, who's here today, uh, Bajan Hanjan, challenged audiences to reconsider long-held oriental stereotypes regarding South Asian femininity, and I suggest their work should be regarded as acts of reclamation, empowerment, and self-definition. Now, this generation of female artists worked and exhibited collaboratively and collectively in order to challenge stereotypes. Um, exhibitions in themselves were acts of resistance, and artists curated their own shows and worked as activists, exploring themes and contemporary issues that affected their lives as Asian women artists in Britain. Um, and today, I'm going to introduce four of these exhibitions. Um, four Indian women artists at the India-UK gallery organized by Bajan Hanjan with Shaila Berman in January 82, 
Nimayesh, an exhibition of five Asian women's work at the People's Gallery, uh, London, uh, 5th of March uh, to the 28th of March, 1986, again curated by Bajan Hanjan. Jagrati, an exhibition of 13 Asian women artists organized by Simrath Patti and held at the Greenwich Citizens Gallery in Woolwich, October to November, 1986 and in focus at Horizon Gallery London held in 1990. What should hopefully be immediately obvious is that these are not mainstream spaces. So, the exhibition for, I'm liking Shaila's uh, reaction to this photo. Um, the exhibition for Indian women artists at the India Artists UK Gallery was organized by Bajan Hanjan with Shaila Berman and included examples of their work alongside that of Naomi Inni, who worked in wooden sculpture, and Vinodi Ebden, who worked in ceramics. The show ran from December 1981 until February 82, and in a recent conversation, Hanjan recalled that she was invited by the collective um, Indian Artists UK, um, otherwise known as Ayuk, to cur curate the show, which was one of the first in their new premises at Audley Street in the basement of the Indian High Commission. Ayuk had been established in 1976, and its members included Amal Ghosh, uh, Balraj Khanna, and Shurek Videk, amongst others. However, Hanjan was the only woman on the board of Ayuk, and as such, it fell to her to organize an exhibition of women artists. Um, she, uh, she recalls that Vinadi, Ebden, and Naomi Inni were known to Ayuk, um, although they lived outside of London, and she and Shaila were friends, having studied together at the Slade. She recalled that the selection of women artists was not planned exactly, but grew organically as, quote, these were the only women on Ayuk's books. Uh, nonetheless, Berman recalls that the show itself was intended as a feminist gesture. Now, um, quite remarkably, the show was reviewed for the Arts Review by Caroline Collier, now of Tate. And I say remarkably because of the four exhibitions that I'm going to be talking about today, this is the only review I've been able to find that was published in a, what we might regard as a mainstream art publication. Um, nonetheless, I believe it's possible and plausible to argue that the, the, the decision to review the show was made because it fell within um, the magazine's uh, focus on the 1982 Festival of India. It had a three-page spread um, looking forward to the activities of the V&A in that exhibition. Um, uh, and it's that which stimulated the review rather than any explicit desire to support uh, a burgeoning uh, black arts movement in Britain. For Collier, the show examined the, quote, the power of emblems and raised questions about the nature of symbols. Interestingly, Shyla Berman's prints, which focused on her hometown of urban Liverpool, depicting barred windows and metal grills, such as in bloody cages, or graffiti-like mark-making, as in love hearts, are viewed here, uh, by Collier as symbolic equivalents of Bajan Hanjan's prints evoking regenerative seed pods and highly textured sawdust paintings presented in a color palette of reds, umbers, uh, which are reminiscent of scorched earth. And I wonder if, um, retrospectively, Caroline uh, would uh, recognize her interpretation as indicative of a type of contemporaneous primitivizing tendency which, um, and the nature of symbolism and universality when actually um, the artworks, I think, are quite different. So my second exhibition is Numayesh, an exhibition of five Asian women's work at the People's Gallery in 86, again organized by Bajan Hanjan. And she uh, said that it sought to highlight the creative diversity of Asian women artists. However, she recalls that the show was staged at short notice and in response to uh, availability of funds from the GLC. The exhibition showcased work made in sculpture, stained glass, print, ceramics, and painting and the exhibiting artists were Dushka Ahmed, Vinadi Ebden, Nina Edge, Bajan Hanjan, and Naomi Inni. Again, three of the artists that had been exhibited in her previous exhibition and two new artists. And Bajan recalls that by 1986, she'd met a widening uh, range circle of female artists and had subsequently been able to be a bit more selective in, uh, in the women that she uh, exhibited. Although, obviously, there's still considerable overlap. 
Jagrati, um, an exhibition of 13 women artists, was held at the Greenwich Citizens Gallery in Woolwich in 1986. And here I have the um, double page spread uh, featured in the magazine Art Rage, which uh, featured the show. Um, the exhibition included work by Dushka Ahmed, Sidmarath Patti, Zarina Bimji, Shutapa Biswas, Shaila Berman, Nina Edge, Banja, Bajan Hanjan, Naomi Ini, Mumtaz Karimji, Shamina Kanur, Sukinda Sand, Ranjan Chandra, and Shanti Thomas. Now, um, it had originally been conceived as a thematic show concentrating on the issue of domestic violence, but during the planning stages, expanded its remit to broader considerations of the experiences of Asian women. Nonetheless, the experience of fragmentation and isolation in Britain was central to the show, and many of the artworks presented solitary female figures. In the catalogue, Faye, um, Faye Rodriguez uh, referenced the murders of Balwant Kerr and Gurup Kerr as points of departure for the exhibition. Balwant Kerr was murdered by her husband at the Brent Asian Women's Refuge in 1985, and Gurdup Kerr was murdered by her husband and brother-in-law. Southall Black Sisters organized campaigns to ensure the proper prosecution of those who perpetrated the murders. Works by Dushka Ahmed and Bajan Hanjan, who also at this time worked at Sahara, Sahara, the Asian women's refuge in Reading, should properly be regarded as artistic interventions aimed at focusing attention on the abuses occurring within the privacy of communities and families. The mural by Dushka Ahmed testifies to the murder of Asian women within the home. Enlarged and overlapping black and white newsprint offers an incessant cacophony in order to convey the grim reality of the physical and mental abuse which women suffer. Headlines shout, family plotted murder, while in the center, the eye of a defiant woman stares out at us. Like many of Bajan Hunjan's portrait paintings, Tribute to late Balwant Kerr and Gurup Kerr, victims of domestic violence, is divided into two parts. On the left is a framed image of a woman dressed in salwar kameez, looking out directly at the viewer. She is upright, dignified, and seemingly self-assured. Adjacent to her is an orb of glowing orange, emanating rays of red-orange light. While Ahmed's um, mural conveys fury, in Bajan Hanjan's work, the figurative and symbolic combine, the women burn brightly in our memory, perhaps. However, the show sought to move beyond the narratives of honor killings and victimhood commonly associated with the representation of South Asian women. Other forms of feminist resistance were explored, and the presentation of strong Asian women as a dominant theme of the show is perhaps an inevitable response to its initial conception. Shutapa Biswas' contribution to the show was a painting, Que Sera Sera, in which a small child looks up at her mother. What is at stake in Biswas' image is the way in which the political consciousness and agency is passed down from, child, from mother to child within the confines of the home. That the Asian woman does not conform to the passive stereotype of submissive wife, and as Griselda Pollock has noted in relation to uh, Biswas' depictions of domestic scenes, quote, family space is a critical space for Asian women in the struggle with white and black patriarchies, with the imperial state and its race, racist immigration and employment policies. The locations within which South Asian women could assert their visibility and agency was also addressed in City Tempo of 1985 by Shanti Thomas, in which a woman is shown apparently retreating from a looming city skyline. St. Paul's Cathedral, the Bank of England, and St. Bride's Church jostle for space amongst the newer towers of London's financial centre. It's an interesting painting, for despite the dark, oppressive skies and the precariousness of the urban infrastructure, the woman herself seems self-assured, at once part of her environment. Her red briefcase and newspaper, perhaps indicating that the city is where she works and locates herself, her backward glance connecting her with the buildings in the distance. At the same time, her hasty retreat suggests that she's not given herself uh, wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly to the city, and that's perhaps a sentiment to which we can all share. So uh, my final case studies um, look at some exhibitions taken, uh, staged at the Horizon Gallery, and Al Noor's already uh, mentioned this gallery um, today. 
so in the 1980s, the group Indian Artists UK evolved into the Horizon Gallery. Unfortunately, there's not enough time to go into the history of the gallery now, but between 1987 and 1991, it staged a series of exhibitions of work by South Asian artists in Britain and sought to balance its program by scheduling artists from both an older and younger generation. And um, I have to thank Bajan again for sharing her photograph. This is the only photograph she has of her solo show in that space, if we're thinking about the paucity of archival material. The gallery, although it was organized and run by an older generation of male artists, they played a particular support to emerging female artists, and Shuta Babiswas and Shaila Berman also had uh, solo shows there. Now, in 1990, the Horizon Gallery made what Eddie Chambers has described as, quote, by far its most important curatorial intervention by staging a series of four consecutive exhibitions under the collective title In Focus. These exhibitions were a direct response to Rashid Areen's The Other Story. The press release for the exhibitions noted that, quote, an important group of Asian women artists born and raised in Britain are not recognized in the Hayward show. And the press release went on to explain that the in-focus shows are designed to give a representative view of the work of Asian artists living in Britain. Reiterating the press release in her review of the in-focus exhibitions, Vina Stevenson, writing in Bazaar magazine, explained that, quote, Particular emphasis was given to women artists who comprised exactly half of the exhibitors. Of the four exhibitions, the first two were all women, and for Stevenson, the significance of this arrangement was to highlight the much-talked-about omission of South Asian women from the Hayward show. In fact, she says, this was one of the main motivations of this series of exhibitions. So what was exhibited? In the first exhibition, which ran from the 24th of January to the 9th of February 1990, we had works by Bajan Hanjan and uh, Shaila Berman, seen here, and uh, Shanti Thomas and Jajit Chuhan, who's also in the audience somewhere today. Um, this first exhibition, we're told by Stevenson in her review, featured mainly works that were figurative su and subjects included self-portraiture, family and notions of the home. And I think seen together, um, these four artworks give a sense perhaps of what, um, what the curators were trying to do in this initial exhibition. The second exhibition, which ran from the 14th of February to the 2nd of March, showed photographic work by Mumtaz Karimji, Zarina Bimji, Nudrat Afraz, and Pradeepta Das. Um, and included work that addressed memory, history, sexuality, and the, the possibility of articulating dissent through the medium of photography. Um, I have only given you here an image uh, of a work by Mumtaz Karimji because I'm trying to identify specific works that I know were included in the show, and I haven't just haven't got those images of the other three for, for the other three artists. Now, Nudrat Afras and Pradeepta Das presented documentary images taken in Europe and South Asia, respectively, while Zarina Bimji presented an installation combining photography with scattered text, dried flowers, and crumpled muslin on the floor. Mumtaz Karimji presented work from her series Notes from the City of the Sun, in which photographs depicting Chinese landscapes were accompanied by poems by Zhu Chen, Xu Ting, and Bei Dao, which the artist herself had translated. The landscapes themselves were images of mist and color and were reg regarded in purely aesthetic terms, while the poems were written by scholars closely associated with the pro-democracy movement in the early 1980s and were understood by the artist and by Chinese audiences as acts of contestation. Karimji's body of work then should be regarded as an investigation of, into how dissent can be articulated through um, aesthetic means and perhaps uh, gives a broader indication, an indication of the broader interests of South Asian female artists at this time. Now, although archival material um, about these in-focus shows is scarce, um, and we don't have a complete picture of the exhibitions, the critical reception of the Horizon shows that I've been able to find have been generally positive. Fasana Probin's review for Spare Rib focuses on the first two female exhibitions. 
However, while ostensibly a review, she actually says very little about the exhibitions and instead focuses on the barriers faced by women artists, suggesting that, quote, the very need to hold an exhibition of Asian women artists in a more modest setting than the Hayward Gallery defines the meaning of black women's struggle in the art world. In the short piece, she relays her conversations with Shyla Berman and Chanty Thomas and reflects on the status of Asian women artists. Berman is cited as being frustrated by the fact that male artists have failed to recognize the struggle, struggles Asian women experience getting to art college in the first place in the face of disapproving and uncomprehending parents. While Thomas has pre uh, is presented as being concerned with finding a balance between both the positive and negative life experiences of, of women. And Proven highlights Thomas's painting, Sleeping, women, Sleeping Woman, which I've uh, shown here, um, which was included in the show uh, as an example of contemporary British Asian painting that both conveys the duality uh, and beauty, the, the duality of beauty and hardship experienced by Asian women. Now, um, what can we learn from these exhibitions? That artists were curating their own shows, that there was a supportive community of artists addressing feminist concerns, um, that these exhibitions highlighted the plurality of female artistic practice, um, that they had uh, political and personal concerns, but also that archival material was scarce, reviews were mainly uh, undertaken within an Asian um, or a minority um, uh, press, that they were often uh, constructed ad hoc um, and uh, in response to funding um, that sprung up from seemingly nowhere. And um, in presenting the exhibitions in quick succession today, I'm also wary of foreshortening time. And I just want to emphasize that these um, exhibitions took place at a distance from each other in 1981, 86, and 1990. And that this temporal lag between shows should highlight to us the lack of opportunity, the lack of continuity um, for Asian women artists to exhibit together um, and, uh, and, and uh, present their work. However, it's also possible to argue that these uh, shows inform subsequent exhibitions in mainstream galleries. Um, for example, a table of four at the Blue Coat in Liverpool in 1991, which showcased the work of Nina Edge, Bajan Hunjan, Tamina Shah, and Venus Stevenson, um, and with the curator Brian Biggs at, that, at the Blue Coat suggesting that the artists shared, quote, similar perspectives on their role of, as Asian women artists working in Britain. That same year, Nimapuvia Smith um, curated a circular dance at the Arnolfini in Bristol, which toured to Stoke-on-Trent and Colchester in 1992. In her catalogue forward for the circular dance, Jane Conaty, the visual arts programmer at the Arnolfini, um, outlined the context for this exhibition, which included six female artists of Indian origin, um, and she cites Jagrati. The circular dance sought to pick up the threads of the collective um, story presented in Jagrati and aimed to demonstrate the strength and diversity of creativity amongst Indian women practitioners in Britain at this time. But as a final thought, um, I'd like to, sorry, and just to highlight, which Alnor has already highlighted, um, that circular dance and blue coat were taking place in regional galleries, um, uh, Liverpool, uh, and uh, Bristol, Colchester, um, and that there is a lot more work to be done on looking at how these exhibitions of Asian women artists toured um, regional uh, mainstream spaces. However, as a final thought, I'd like to suggest that the exclusion of women of South Asian origin from the other story is indicative of other exclusions. Within the context of this conference, it's important to note that many of the artists I've discussed today exist within a slippage between India and Britain. This is a generation of art artists who are either born in Britain or who came here as children or students, and for whom Britain was their home. Many um, experienced India and their Asianness from a distance. Um, some, such as Zarina Bimji and Bajan Hanjan, came from East Africa and their ties to India were already uh, removed. So what's at stake in my research as a historian of British art history is uh, where to place these art, how to place, where and how to place these artists within and across artistic narratives. 
at once British, but other of South Asian origin, but uh, in the words of a couple of artists I've spoken to, not really Indian, um, uh, how, how, where do we position them? Many of the activities of these artists have been overlooked in histories of both British and Indian art histories. And while some have found solidarity within the black British arts movement, and I should say that uh, Eddie Chambers has been a consistent champion of Paminda Kerr, who was here yesterday, um, even here within this black arts uh, uh, movement, um, the activities of South Asian women have, have been somewhat marginalized. Um, so uh, I would argue the struggle for representation and the need to articulate British Asian art histories continues. <laughs>